Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. Now there's a, another class of functions that we're going to, are going to be the last part of our library of functions, and they're all related to this one. This one is called the reciprocal function. Remember, reciprocal means take one over a number. So the reciprocal function is f of x equals one over x take the reciprocal of the number. So f of two is one half, f of three is one third, f of one fourth would be four, the reciprocal of the number. What ends up happening is you get a piece of the graph in quadrant one. Remember this is quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. You get a piece of the graph in quadrant one and a piece in quadrant three because when you take the reciprocal of a positive number you get a positive number and when you take the reciprocal of a negative number you get a negative number. The key points I want you to label are 1, 1 and negative 1, 1, negative 1. But there's something extra on these types of functions. This is called a rational function. We need to know that rational functions have these things called asymptotes most of the time. And for example, this one has an asymptote at x equals 0. Why don't we get any function values at x equals zero? Why doesn't this function cross this line? What would happen if you tried to plug zero into f? You'd get f of zero equals one over zero. What's wrong with that? It's not zero. Zero over one is zero because what this is saying is how many ones does it take to add up to zero? None. Okay, but one divided by zero is asking how many zeros does it take to add up to one? And you can add up an infinite number of zeros, right? And nothing happens. So division by zero is undefined. Yeah. So the function is undefined at zero. Whenever you have a value where the function is undefined, you're either going to have a hole in the graph, a little hole, or an asymptote. In this case, you'll all have an asymptote. And then another interesting thing happens, and we end up with a horizontal asymptote along the line y equals zero, the x-axis. And the reason why that happens, you can understand best if you try plugging in really big numbers. So watch what happens if I make a little x, f of x chart, right? And let's say I plug in 10, for example. What's f of 10? Oh, one over 10. One tenth, good. What's f of 100? 1 over 100, or 0 0.01. What's f of 1,000? 1 over 1,000, or 0 0.001. What's 1 over a million? 1 1 millionth, or 0 0.000001. So what's happening is I'm looking at points way out here on this part of the graph. And the graph is getting closer and closer and closer to what? The y values are getting closer and closer to zero, aren't they? But can you ever take the reciprocal of a large enough number that it actually gives you zero? No, that's not gonna happen. So we put in this imaginary boundary line to show to other people that the graph is going to come very, very close to it and, and run right alongside of it. It's gonna get so close that you won't be able to see the difference but it never actually touches. And that happens in the negative direction as well. It stays just below the axis. So we see that we have these two asymptotes. So when I ask you to graph the reciprocal function, I want to see not only the two key points, but also the two asymptotes in addition to the shape of the actual function. Now I said that this is the first in a whole family of related functions. Let's look at the next one. This is one over x essentially to the first power. I don't ever write the first power, but that's what it is. If you take one over x to the second power, you get a very similar graph. It's just that instead of having pieces of it in quadrants one and three, we end up with pieces in one and two. Why would it be that over here we got pieces in quadrants one and three, but over here we're getting pieces in quadrants one and two? Because x is squared has what effect on the sign? Always positive, that's right. So we're not gonna ever get anything in quadrant three or quadrant four because those have negative y values. So it makes sense that both of these pieces are gonna be up in quadrants one or two. 
We still have two key points to plot, one, one now, and negative one, positive one. And we still have two asymptotes because you still can't plug in x equals zero. You'll get undefined still, even if you square zero, it's still zero. And you still find that as you plug in very large x values, you're gonna get tiny little fractions close to the axis, but never touching it. Notice that the domain is everything from negative infinity to zero, not including zero zero, and then everything from zero to infinity. The domain, we're allowed to plug in any x value we want, except for zero is what that's saying. And now the range is gonna be zero to infinity, not including zero again, that's why it's parentheses, because it never actually hits the x-axis. Now these two functions are representative of any function of the form one over x to a power. If the power is odd, as it was in the first function, then you get both positive and negative results. So you're in quadrants one and three. If the power is even, you'll always get two positive quadrants, one and two. So in general, we actually have a whole family of functions of this reciprocal form. We call them reciprocals of power functions, and they all look like this. If the power is even, you get quadrants one and two, and you have to plot the key point one, one, and the key point negative one, one. If the power's odd, you have quadrants one and three, and you have to plot the key point one, one, and the key point negative one, negative one. And in both cases, you have to label the asymptotes. What's the equation of the y-axis? Is it x equals zero or y equals zero? Everybody always wants to say y equals zero because it's the y-axis, but that's not true, because what do all these points have in common? an x value of zero. And then the x-axis is not x equals zero, it's y equals zero. I see that error on tests a lot, so, okay? And that's the last of our library of functions. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like it.